Continuing on the catfish ridge transition discussion, we're now going to do it the other way, going downwind. And um, again, it's a similar kind of deal. Same same rules apply. You know, first we want to float up. Second, we want to find our line. Third, uh, we probe, but that's a little bit different going downwind. And I'll explain that shortly. And then we reach the point of no return uh, when we go for the jump. And all of the same considerations apply, but it's a little bit tweaked given the fact that we're going downwind. Um, and before we go, again, I wanted to point out uh, the you know reason that we fly the low ridge here. You can see it's it actually a fairly high ridge. It's got few obstructions upwind. It's a very nice little ridge. But if you look at the downwind ridge, it's a little higher. But this upwind ridge uh, serves to mess up the air, and it's really not much of a ridge. So that's why we don't fly out there. So anyway, first step, float up. So we are now going about best glide speed or so, maybe even a hair uh, faster. And then uh, we're just going to go and work our way up. Now, note the fact that we are doing a, we're going from an upwind to a downwind uh, jump here. And we're going from a low ridge to a high ridge. Oftentimes, these actually can be a little bit tricky. Uh, and one of the things that changes from an upwind transition from a down, uh, when, uh, one of the things that changes in a downward transition is that your point of no return happens a lot sooner. Meaning, if you're going to go downwind, you can't go back upwind uh, pretty quickly. Whereas if you're going upwind, you can turn around pretty, you know, very often. Now, it looks like that we found a little bit of good air, and we're going to uh, turn our way up a hair. So in this case, we're just still working our way up, you know, still floating our way up higher and higher. One of the tricky bits with regards to this jump, especially going from a, from a low ridge to a high ridge, is, you know, once you, the landing options at the other side are really not all that great. So you do not want to get in there low. Now, I would note that I placed that penalty box a little bit too, uh, too far out. Uh, you know, you're, uh, you, can, you can cut that corner a little bit in real life. Ah, very good. A little bit more good air. Now, again, the first time you do this, feel free to take that thermal and get higher. You know, I mean, there, there's no shame in that at all. And, again, the higher you get into these transitions, the better. You know, you're, you're doing great when you uh, are uh, if you have extra margin. And from this point, I mean, you can, you can cut the corner there, no problem, in any case. Now, note the fact that, uh, you know, kind of what's the strategy here? And again, um, at this point, we're still trying to find our line and kind of probe along into the jump. Now, despite the fact that the ridge underneath us is kind of why, kind of merging its way down into the, the, into the Delaware River, oftentimes you can find good air going into that, uh, going a little bit further. And as we go a little bit further, that's, it's actually cutting the, the distance of the jump off of, off of our left. So if we go, because the ridge kind of angles uh, from the saddle to toward the upper reservoir a little bit. So if we go straight and we're in good air, we're doing better. And uh, especially if we're maintaining altitude. And the other thing is that as we probe along over here, we can always turn around and go back. So we're just going to keep floating along, going uh, into the wind, uh, going, you know, going toward the gorge. And if at any point here you find a nice little bit of a line, you can take a turn in it if you like, but you can always also just hang left in it and just run the, run, run the line downwind. So at this point, uh, we're saying, okay, that's pretty good. You know, and we're going to hang a left and go for the jump. Now, once you decide to go, once you have made this decision, you've reached the point of return, you are not going to be able to get back very, very, very quickly, uh, especially for lower. And so once you, decided, once you decide to go for a downwind jump, you're going for it. Um, one of the key things uh, is that once you've decided to go for it is, well, it's either going to work or you're going to end up uh, exercising your alternative option for landing. In this case, it's the, it's the field at the base of the bridge. And one important note there is you really can't afford to get that much below ridge top, uh, or really hardly at all, if when you're doing this jump. Meaning, if you get really, if you get into that ridge pretty low, you're going to be in a position where you're not going to be able to escape. So, 
um, that you have to be very careful to make sure that you give yourself some additional energy. But uh, once we decided to go, you know, now we have a strong tailwind pushing us in. We're doing great. And we're just basically riding it out. Then, at this point, you know, we've got it made. You know, we're going to start angling in toward the ridge. We're not going to drift over to the other side. And there you go. Now we're in the upper band again, and we're doing great. So, again, you know, a downwind jump, it's really, you know, not all that different from an upwind jump in the sense that you still have the same stages that we talked about. You know, float up, find your line, kind of probe into the jump a little bit before, and before committing to it. You've reached the point in overturn, and then you go for it. And along the way, you're always on top of your alternative options in case things don't work out. Um, again, the higher you do it, you know, the more conservative you are, the, the more mindful you are of these steps, you know, then it's going to be low stress and, and uh, pretty safe. Um, but uh, if you start extending on these margins, things can get sporty very, very quickly.